five seconds. Mr. Speaker, if agricultural production has to be maximized, the greatest attention has to be given to four factors. First, seeds should be of the right quality and improved with high yielding varieties. Then, fertilizers, pesticides and water. As regards these four factors, it is interesting to see that government or the ministry does not appear to have paid any attention to certain malpractices that have crept into these matters. Take for instance seeds. There is no mention at all of the fact that a large percentage of these so-called improved or high yielding varieties of seeds is adulterated. What steps has the government taken in this regard? It is not of vital importance that seeds should be pure and unadulterated. Their effect on production is very great. Therefore, from this point alone, all possible steps should be taken to prevent adulteration. The farmer suffers because he spends money on costly seeds in order that he may get the best possible yield but finds that the seeds are adulterated. Why has not government taken up this matter in its own hands? Every state government interferes in this matter. In fact, multiplication of seeds is done under the orders of the agriculture department in one state after another state. And yet, when it comes it their quality control, adequate machinery does not exist. Then we come to the question of fertilizers. Again, these are of vital importance. What has happened? At one single stroke, government has doubled the prices of fertilizers and expects farmers to produce, procure them in the required quantities, knowing fully well also that government fixes the prices of what they produce at a level which makes it impossible for the farmers to pay these high prices for fertilizers. The previous speaker referred to the Agricultural Prices Commission. The commission has fixed the price, say, of wheat at a certain level without taking into account the cost of production of the farmer. Yesterday, a member of the advisory committee to the agricultural prices commission stated that he has sent in his resignation for what use was it for him to remain on the committee if no importance was ever attached to the advice tendered on such a basic matter as cost of production. If cost of production is not taken into account, I would like to state here that it is difficult to see on what basis the Agricultural Prices Commission fixed the prices. Several agricultural universities have carried out surveys 
and the results of these surveys are available. Punjab University carried out a survey and other research students have so and have pointed out what the cost of production would be. For instance, in regard to wheat, they have arrived at the finding that the cost of production would be in the region of Rs. 1200. Yet, the procurement price fixed is Rs. 1100. What is the justification for this? In the face of the fact that the price of fertilizer, an important input, has been doubled. The prices have increased considerably and many types of pesticides that are in the market today are adulterated. What steps have the government taken to ensure that the pesticides that are in the market for sale to the farmers are of the right quality and are not adulterated ones. Is there any machinery in regard to drugs? At least in name, there is a drug controller in every state to see that the drugs sold are not adulterated. In regard to pesticides, have you set up any machinery to ensure that the pesticides are not adulterated? Last but not the least important factor for maximization of agricultural production is water. They say they have programs for increasing irrigation facilities. During the seventh plan, they wanted to bring in a considerable additional area under irrigation so that they could have assured water supply. They have similar programs in the fifth plan. Why is it that a number of these projects are not completed within the time schedule that is laid down? Why is it that a number of most desirable projects are not even taken in hand for years for one reason or the other and the majority of them are held up because of interstate water disputes. What steps have been taken by the government to resolve those disputes? They say that they have no powers. What is the good of their saying? So, when the ruling party is today in a position to pass any legislation that is desires, even to amend the constitution as often as it likes. And yet, it does not take steps to settle these issues, which would result in self-sufficiency in food grains and also in respect of many vital cash crops needed for important industries. Why is it that we are unable to take any steps to settle these disputes and allow them to continue with no end in sight? A little while ago, I think a statement was placed on the table of the house saying that there were 157 projects 
outstanding in the scheme stop